Think the Snyder Cut was the first time an angry mob bent a major studio to their will? Back in the 2000s, sci-fi fans pulled the ultimate Hail Mary for a series they loved. This is the untold truth of Serenity. Long before his name became synonymous with his behind-the-scenes behavior and years ahead of his rise to prominence as the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Joss Whedon was a workaday Hollywood screenwriter. He penned a few Roseanne episodes, a few episodes of the original Parenthood, and got his big break on the writing team for the now classic Toy Story. Whedon then shifted his focus to writing sci-fi with Alien Resurrection, the fourth installment of the intergalactic horror franchise. In Resurrection, series protagonist Ellen Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver, encountered a crew of space mercenaries bearing more than a passing resemblance to the Firefly crew. While there's not a one-to-one -one comparison between the Resurrection Gang and the Serenity crew, let's say Mal and his associates are kind of like Buffy to Resurrection's faith. It all just goes to show elements of Firefly existed in Whedon's imagination way before the early 2000s. In some ways, the real-world story of Firefly and Serenity hinges on the technological acceleration of their era. Social media was in its infancy of relevancy in 2002, but that didn't stop Whedon's very online fanbase from getting loudly perturbed about Fox canning their new favorite show. You suck! As Facebook wouldn't be invented for a few more years, Firefly fans, nicknamed Browncoats in homage to the independent planet's army from the show's mythology, had to rely on digital message boards and forums to vent their indignation. Biographer Amy Pascal said, I believe it was one of the first instances where the producers reached out and asked fans for their help to save the show. Similar online campaigns eventually rose up in attempts to reverse the cancellations of CBS's Jericho and NBC's Community. Over the years, fan backlash rightly or wrongly directed at film and TV studios expanded into a potentially terrifying force of its own. The most notorious example being the campaign for Zack Snyder's Justice League, a new edit of Justice League which had credited Wheaton as its primary director. Ironically, online fan rage became relevant in the entertainment industry because fans wanted more of Joss Whedon's work, and its biggest moment came at the hands of fans who wanted his work replaced with someone else's. Angry ranting on the internet is well and good, but on its own, it wasn't enough to convince movie studios and producers that Firefly had a large enough audience to support it on a new network. You couldn't find evidence of Firefly doing strong numbers on Hulu either, because there was no Hulu in the early 2000s. But DVD sales were one quantifiable metric that could gauge the popularity of any movie or TV show. Upon its release, Firefly The Complete Series, which helpfully included the three episodes that never made it to air in the US, crashed through the 200,000 units sold ceiling pretty quickly. An IGN article from around the same time states that Amazon burned through its supply of Firefly DVDs on pre-orders before they were officially available for purchase. For a series that was poorly promoted, aired in the wrong order, and axed after about four months, that's quite a lot of box sets. The comparatively surprising retail boom established a perception that Firefly contained untapped potential as a franchise in some form. While he came to the table with more than 30 episodes of directed television to his name, the cinematic follow-up to Firefly marks Whedon's debut as a major motion picture director some 15 years into his emergence as an active Hollywood creative professional. Even after 2005's Serenity, he didn't direct another movie until The Avengers. In total, Joss Whedon has directed four films, the comparatively low-budget cult film Serenity, the hugely popular Avengers, and its sequel Avengers Age of Ultron, and Much Ado About Nothing, a zero-budget Shakespeare adaptation he made at his house with actor buddies for a lark. Dudes had a weird career. Of course, Whedon also wrote Serenity, describing the process as an unusually challenging endeavor, he said in an IGN interview in 2003. Whedon explained, I want to tell a mythic and exciting and timeless tale about nine people that the audience has never met and yet not betray or repeat anything I do on the series. It's going to be tough. As far as a fan and critical consensus goes, it looks like he pulled it off. Although films reaching for the same visual scope Serenity targeted typically cost north of $100 million to make in those days, Universal encouraged Whedon to locate production in a cheaper country to keep costs down. In defiance of such conventional wisdom, Whedon insisted on shooting in his home city, earning him some good press and goodwill from the Los Angeles community. Somehow, he reportedly delivered Serenity to the studio for less than $40 million. 
Whedon's other demand was that the original cast return to their formerly TV roles, which wasn't a problem, as the Universal executives overseeing the project took an if-it's-not-broke approach to the Serenity roster of actors. Nathan Fillion's job most assuredly was locked in. It has since been revealed that Alan Tudyk's inability to sign on for a sequel is partially to blame for Wash's tragic fate. Knowing what we know now, that makes the end of his story extra sad. Without a Serenity sequel, Wash died for nothing. Sarah Paulson plays Dr. Karin, a scientist who reveals the Alliance inadvertently created the ultra-violent race of ex-humans known as Reavers. Their aggressor response increased beyond madness. They have become... Well, they've killed most of us. This brings about a plot twist that transcends the movie to impact the entire franchise mythos. So, despite appearing on screen for less than two minutes before dying horribly, Dr. Karin is an extremely important Serenity character. This isn't quite an unknown background extra going on to become a major Hollywood commodity. Paulson was already well-established among the ranks of TV and film actors before she landed this brief but highly memorable part in Serenity. But Ryan Murphy had yet to come into fruition, and therefore Paulson was not yet able to star in virtually every Ryan Murphy-related project, nor had she achieved her current movie star status. So although Sarah Paulson wasn't exactly an unknown before her appearance in Serenity, she definitely secured a key Serenity moment during her on-the-way-up phase. The folks in charge of determining what did and did not stay on the Fox network in the late 90s and early 2000s don't exactly have a spotless track record. Canceling Family Guy after its first pair of seasons is the most glaring example of their questionable competence, but they also canned Arrested Development and Futurama, two other programs now considered classic comedy staples. If Serenity had panned out as a cinematic juggernaut, spawned a string of sequels, and turned the cast into bona fide movie stars, Fox executives would have had to face up to how hard they botched the Firefly rollout. Instead, Serenity failed to surpass the $40 million mark, so after you factor in its promotional costs, Serenity was a net negative for Universal. For reasons totally independent of its quality, Serenity simply didn't click with mainstream moviegoers. Yes? I don't get it. So if the Fox execs thought Firefly would be wildly beloved by a sci-fi fringe, but never attract enough viewers to justify spending at least a million dollars per episode to keep it on network TV, Serenity ticket stubs confirmed their suspicions. While Seth MacFarlane made Fox execs look clueless, Joss Whedon may have done the opposite. Doing press to promote Firefly reruns on basic cable back in 2011, Nathan Fillion mentioned to EW, If I got $300 million from the California lottery, the first thing I would do is buy the rights to Firefly, make it on my own, and distribute it on the internet. He did not assume anyone would take that statement literally or seriously. He assumed poorly. As it turned out, many people took him literally and seriously, and an online fundraising campaign to buy Firefly and give it to Nathan Fillion promptly sprouted legs and started jogging. Fillion himself had to tell folks to power down. Fillion, further explaining himself in a follow-up interview, said, Would I want to do Firefly again? Yes. Do I want people sending in money? No. If we can judge the success of a TV show and or movie by the jobs its cast scrounge up after the fact, then Firefly and Serenity did better than their ratings and box office returns might indicate. After eight seasons in the titular role of Castle, Nathan Fillion currently stars in The Rookie. Gina Torres went on to join the cast of Suits and guest starred on Westworld, Riverdale, and Hannibal, among other TV shows. Alan Tudyk voiced K2SO in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and routinely provides voice acting and or on-screen cameos for other high-profile sci-fi slash superhero slash nerd stuff. Morena Baccarin showed up in TV shows like Homeland and Gotham and was the female lead in Deadpool, arguably the most surprising superhero smash of the last decade. After appearing in a pair of episodes as Malcolm's wife Saffron, Christina Hendricks broke through on TV screens in the role of Joan Harris on Mad Men. Of course, there's some idle, non-committal executive chat about a Firefly relaunch. But as of this writing, there are no announcements or credible rumors indicating an imminent return of the Serenity to any screens, be they big or small. This might be for the best. In the eyes of some, the show's legacy may have benefited from its abbreviated run. As Nathan Fillion himself mused in a 2015 Esquire article, Firefly, as short-lived as it was, never had an opportunity to suck. It didn't have that, oh well, season two was kinda slow. It picked up in season three and season four was great. 
With Hollywood endlessly rebooting, relaunching, and rehashing any established property it thinks is worth another penny, maybe the big streaming nostalgia machine really doesn't need to frack 10 more episodes of Firefly out of Joss Whedon. 20 years further into their careers, the original cast might be expensive and difficult to schedule. Also, if fans have learned anything from the final seasons of Arrested Development and The X-Files, it's that more isn't always better. Firefly fans got 14 episodes and a movie. Maybe that's plenty. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.